Member for Lyon. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to speak in support of this uh, uh, report and also a recommendation from the Public Works Committee in, in terms of the upgrading of facilities for the SES in the southern suburbs. Um, my view would be that uh, any upgrading of facilities for emergency services, and particularly, particularly for those which actually are volunteer-based, is, is worthy of our support and also worthy of our um, support um, in our community. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, all our emergency services, uh, uh, whether they are, are paid workers or volunteers, uh, play an important and increasingly important role uh, in our community, whether it's uh, the CFS or the MEF, MFS or the SES and there's a whole range of other um, allied emergency services as well. Uh, they, the reality is that their role is increasing in terms of community safety given the, the climate change environment we're living today. The reality is, with the extremes of weather we are now experiencing, we're going to be calling on more and more uh, on the, our emergency services to actually keep our community safe. Some things we can do better, therefore we, perhaps we won't need their services, but some, in some situations we're not going to be able to retrofit our, our urban footprint or retrofit a whole range of things, and so our, our volunteers will be required to do a lot of um, emergency work, uh, both rescue and also in terms of both life, protecting life and also protecting uh, property. Uh, Mr. S Mr Speaker, uh, I was fortunate for the short period of time I was the Emergency Service Minister to visit and be involved in the emergency service in the state, I visit a number of SES um, um, units across the, across the state, uh, both in metro area and in also the country regions. And I think in general community, I think they're one of the services which perhaps is not fully understood in terms of their scope of their work they do perform in our community. Um, they do more than just sandbagging or uh, removing trees and branches off roofs, etc. They do rescue work, um, uh, both at, uh, with their, in association with the marine rescue uh, wing of their services. They do quite a bit of work in that regard. Um, I know there's always a call for additional resources in the, along the south coast along the limestone coast for the rescue work they do out there, where water's a bit rougher. Uh, in the country areas, Mr. S Mr. Uh, Speaker, uh, when I visited some units, I was, so I was pleasantly surprised at the, the scope of works they do in terms of rescue work. They actually go up and down um, cliff faces, etc., rescuing people, uh, and the work they, they're involved in. So there, there is always a need for a greater need for volunteers. Um, there is like all volunteer-based organisations, uh, the SCS and the CFS have, 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 have been hit by, by COVID uh, in the aftermath of COVID in terms of people being, not only being able to participate as volunteers, um, but more importantly, Mr Speaker, and this is generally uh, true right across the volunteer sector, some have not returned to those volunteering uh, work. Uh, and we need, we need to do that as both a government uh, but also as a parliament, uh, we need to work out why that's the case and what we need to do to remove those barriers from people from uh, participating in voluntary work. Uh, my, my, my view is that voluntary work is very important, not only from a cost-saving perspective, but also in terms of what volunteers do, whether they're the SES or the CFS or the volunteers in a whole range of other fields. Uh, the volunteer and their work they do, they actually help build communities and build connections. Uh, and that's very important. They also build a much more uh, skilled base in community too. The things they do in communities, they build leadership skills in, in our communities, people who actually take on leadership roles within the SES or maybe the CFS, uh, actually build leadership skills which actually are transferable to other parts of the community. But also it's important that they, they actually, uh, uh, th th those sort of skills they, they evolve, they can actually bring it into their work life. It is increasingly tougher for volunteers. A lot of volunteers uh, in terms of who may, who may also work full time will, will find it harder to obviously find time if they're raising families to put time into other volunteering work. But having said that, again, I, I re reaffirm that we need to, as both government and as a parliament, to work out what we need to do to assist volunteers. Um, one of the biggest complaints I get about people who want to volunteer is some of the bureaucracy behind it now in terms of just trying to volunteer, how difficult it is actually to volunteer, all the paperwork you have to do, all the record keeping you have to do, etc. Now, some of it makes sense, but some of it is actually, I'm not sure whether it's actually having counterproductive, uh, a net, and also a net 
and a negative in terms of our community. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm very pleased that uh, I was able to uh, convince the previous government, uh, sorry, the current government, sorry, the, when we're in opposition, to commit to uh, to commit to uh, investing in a SES unit in my electorate. Uh, I know that uh, uh, people in the Liberal Party have derided those election commitments. I can assure you it's one of those election commitments which has actually been publicly um, uh, aired in my community. People know exactly where it's going. People know exactly how much it's going to cost and people who do actually support it. Uh, in fact, my local newspaper, one of my local newspapers, the Bunyip, has actually got all the election commitments which my party made at election time. I was on page three, I think, just before the election. And after the election, they said, OK, Piccolo, we're going to check everyone you deliver. And I can assure you, we'll be delivering. Despite the Liberal Party warning us to not commit to those commitments, and building an SES unit in Gawler is one of those commitments, despite the fact that the Liberal Party wanted us to break those promises and not supporting the commitments we made, uh, Mr Speaker, I think it's important that we do maintain, um, we do maintain the, those commitments. <laughs> Member for order, order, order. Member for Heysen is called to order. There's a point of order being raised by one of his colleagues, which I'll hear under 134. Order, Member for Morialta. I've been reading the uh, Public Works Committee report closely, and I'm struggling to identify the relevance of anything the Member for Light is saying to it. Order. The member for Light was reflecting, as I understand it, in general terms on the government's policy, including in relation to emergency services in his own electorate and other government policy. I'll listen carefully. It has been the practice of the order, mem order, members. It has been the practice of the House to allow members some latitude in debates of this type. Member for Light, member for Heysen and the minister will cease their exchange. Order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, for Cheltenham, is called to order. Member for Light, order. Member for Light has the call. Thank you. Member for Flory. Member for Cheltenham, if you have a matter to raise in relation to the conduct of the Member for Hyson, you can raise it as a point of order. Member for Light. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm glad I was able to light up the debate this morning. Uh, Mr. Speaker, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, Member for Light has the call. My day job has been a dad, so I had dad jokes come with that. Uh, Mr. S Mr. Speaker, uh, now in coming back to the SCS unit, which has been promised um, and will be delivered by the government, uh, Mr. Speaker, it was one of, of I think about $16 million worth of commitments that, uh, that uh, my party made leading up to the election, and which we'll be delivering on 100%. And I can assure you, my local councils are very impressed with the commitments we made. Uh, they probably wanted more, but you know, we could only do so much. But um, one of those key commitments, one of, the, one, of the, one of the commitments we made, Mr. Speaker, is the Gawler Williston SES unit, uh, and this is a project which, which I clearly lobbied for within my party to get the funding for. But more important, I also like to acknowledge John Lawrence, who is an SES officer uh, previously with the Salisbury unit, who lobbied quite strongly and has been campaigning for some time for us to get the SES unit uh, built uh, in, in, in the Gore area. Now, Mr. S Mr. Speaker, our, uh, it, the, the new SES unit or facility in the southern suburbs is very important. I can tell you, at the other end of this, uh, other end of this uh, metropolitan area, the one in the north is important. The SES, we're currently, in my electorate, is covered by two SES units. When I'm in cover, they're not actually located in that area. We have the Salisbury unit, which actually do quite good work. So not quite good work, they do good work and also the Kapanda unit, which do good work. And the Kapanda unit also have a, now, I must get this right, they have also a horse unit, a horse service, they go, they go, which in, within their unit too. Uh, sorry, uh, so, sorry? The name of the horses. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, if they were named after me, they'd be thoroughbreds, wouldn't they? Uh, now, uh, uh, on Italian oh, oh, or, so or, so. or, or the Italian stallion, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so, well, Mr. Speaker, yeah, too much information. Mr. Speaker, well, <laughs> what I can say, the, the interjections warranted that comment, I think. Uh, Mr. Speaker, so, Stick to the 
I'll, I'll, I'll get back on the horseback. That's right. Uh, so, Mr. Speaker, those two units do serve our area, but they are spread thin, and that's the importance of this new Gawler unit. And I also like to acknowledge the minister who came out to Gawler recently to, to uh, make the announce, official announcement on behalf of the government that the unit would be proceeding, and work on that unit will be commencing next year, early next year. And I can assure you. It is fully supported by those other two units already. They were there present at the announcement. They think it's important as well. It's also supported by the CFS because all of emergency services work, uh, services working together in partnership to make our community safer. So, Mr. Speaker, uh, it is good news. I, for me, it's always good news when I hear money being put into our emergency services, and particularly like the SES unit here. And I must, for the record, Mr Speaker, it's also been mentioned, are we joining the SES unit in my Gawler Williston unit? I'm not sure how, how good or useful I will be, but I, I might be behind pushing the pens and doing some admin work. I'm not sure whether the physical work I could do, but I think orange, orange is my colour. Thank you, uh, Minister. Uh, orange is the new black, isn't it? So, so, Mr Speaker, on that terms, I support the, the recommendation and the committee's work. Member for Florida,